I turn 33 tomorrow, <laughs> making this my final day as a 32-year-old. And uh, a lot has changed in a year. Some are obvious, like my hair, and some are more subtle, like I've got some extra crinkles here. But the most growth is invisible because that all happened right here, <laughs> right in the noggin. So let me fill you in on what 32 is like. I was feeling good the start of the year. I was hopeful and just so relieved because I was starting to finally feel like myself again. I had one year of motherhood under my belt and I was beginning to have more time and space to explore what I enjoyed again. The first being some solo time. I kind of lost my sense of self the past two years, so I was trying to get to know who I am now. I figured I'd find some clues up in San Francisco, a city where I experienced my most formative years. Being alone felt awkward initially, kind of like meeting up with an old friend you haven't seen in years. It was rusty, but once I relaxed into the silence, I was able to hear what my heart had to say. Honestly, now that I'm here, I realize I have not been alone. I think in like seven years. That fact is astounding. I think that's why this feels so interesting. It feels a little uncomfortable, but it feels kind of good. <laughs> like I forgot that I could just do this. It's unbelievable how important it is to use this muscle of being alone. It's really about balance, isn't it? The duality. It's vital to know how to get along with your community, to learn how to coordinate, but it's just as integral to learn how to be by yourself and enjoy your own company. And this time apart to reflect made me show up even better in all the roles I have in my life. For example, the role of being a mom. The first month of motherhood was really terrifying because I was scared to fuck it all up. I've noticed this pattern in any new thing that I do. I just automatically assume that I will suck, but this is a lie. The truth is I just didn't have any experience. But now that I've had an entire extra year of being a mom, this relationship feels so natural. Like we have our inside jokes. I feel just so much more connected to him. I think the best part about him is that everything feels new again because it's my first time doing everything with him. Another thing that I noticed is that this role of mother tends to supersede all other parts of my identity. To some, I wasn't Jen anymore. I was now mama. Instead of, how are you? It's, how's the baby? The thing is, I know that these comments are harmless, but it just kind of highlighted to me exactly how difficult it can be for many of us to see people outside of their roles, particularly mothers. And I was totally guilty of doing this to my very own mom. But since stepping into motherhood, it's made me so much more closer to her because now it's so apparent that this is only one facet of her life. And I feel like this kind of moment just unlocked the way I perceive people. But now it's, it's easier for me to see people as they are and recognize all the different roles that we have to step into. Being a mother is probably one of my most important roles in my life, but I am making it a promise to myself to continue to show love to all corners of my identity. So earlier this year, I decided to take a US history course at my local community college. Because on my free time, I tend to think about the future a lot. And since we have no way of predicting the future, I thought that looking to the past could be very helpful because history tends to repeat itself, right? Philip Roth called history the relentless unforeseen. There was no way to show people what was gonna happen. And so if anything, taking this history course made me realize that trying to predict the future is a fruitless endeavor. And also it was kind of like a reality check. Like when I was learning about the living conditions and the culture from hundreds of years ago, it really put my life into perspective. Like I would much rather be kind of stressed about a deadline for work than literally sailing four and a half months from England to Jamestown and not even knowing what's on the other side. For five weeks, I learned about our country's history and I 
freaking loved every moment. Like guys, I had such a good time attending class, listening to the lectures, completing the assignments. This is just a stark contrast from what it was like when I was in community college, like when I was 18. I think the biggest difference was that I actually wanted to be there and I wanted to learn. My intention was completely different. I realized that learning doesn't have to stop once you graduate. In fact, I hope I never stop learning. I am forever a student of life and I can't wait to take more courses uh, probably next winter. <laughs> So I think this would be a good moment to quickly cover a moment of struggle for me. The beginning of this year, I lost an important connection of mine. It came as a deep shock because I was ghosted with no explanation. I just had to come to terms that this person does not want me in their life. It hits a pain point in me because rejection stings. No matter how old you get, it's just, ooh, you know? I think after like a few weeks of being painfully insecure and worrying that I was inadvertently hurting the people around me, it actually led me to a few amazing conversations with the closest people in my life. And I came to a conclusion that everyone I meet is going to have a different version of me in their head. Not everyone is going to like me, but it's not my job to try to convince them otherwise. This experience made me closer to the people in my life because I just wanted to start focusing more on my community, like the people that are actually showing up for me, that actually want to have me in their life. And even you guys for watching, like, thank you. Thank you so much for co your continued support. Like, it fucking, it really does trip me out. I think a lot about how bizarre and surreal this job is that I get to be at my house and muse and create and think about life and, 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 and reflect. And so thank you for giving me this gift. Um, I am aware that this is not gonna be a permanent thing, but for now I am, I'm just like relishing in this moment. I just, I'm just so grateful to have this chance. One of my favorite things about getting older is the chance to get to know myself better. Like every day is a new data point to this huge experiment that is my life. Like I just feel a lot more connected to my like physical self and my psychological self. I feel like that bridge has been strengthened. Like this year I really challenged myself to not immediately react and go to my buffers when I was feeling a negative emotion. And this year I think a big win for me was that I was able to go to a party on my own and be sober. This is something that would have not happened in the past. Sure, I might've been sober at a party, but I would literally be like white knuckling it <laughs> through the event. I'd be like, when can I go home? I was so desperate to get a drink when I was at a social event because I just wanted to have all those edges rounded. That's like what alcohol or other substances did for me. But this year showed me that I don't need to do that. I even freaking went to a rave sober. Like that was crazy. And I had the best time. Like going out sober has been such a, a fun new thing that I that I did this past year because I was able to just remember the entire night. But the thing is, I still love a night out, you know? And if I want a, a crisp glass of Sauvignon Blanc, I will drink it. But I love that I don't need it as my like security blanket anymore. Like practicing moments of sobriety when the mood struck was, was amazing. I feel like I'm definitely gonna be doing that more when I am 33. I have no idea what I'm gonna be like next year, but I'm excited how it's all gonna unfold. Um, so happy birthday, Jen. And uh, I will see you next year. Mm -hmm.